हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज द पार्ट फाइव लेक्चर ऑफ वेरिएशन इन क्रोमोजोम नंबर व्हिच इज आल्सो कॉल्ड हेट्रोप्लॉयडी एंड इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग सम मोर एग्जांपल्स ऑफ पॉलीप्लॉइड्स एंड द इम्पॉर्टेंस एंड लिमिटेशंस ऑफ पॉलीप्लॉयडी सो इन द प्रीवियस टू इन द प्रीवियस फोर लेक्चर्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड वट इज हेट्रोप्लॉयडी वट इज यू प्लॉयडी एंड वट इज and new ploidy so we are not going to discuss uh, again and you can refer previous lecture and this is the definition of heteroploidy and new ploidy so we have discussed this many times in previous lectures in today's lecture we will be discussing the uh, origin and evolution of, of some more crop species and the first example which we are discussing today is brassica evolution of brassica so brassica there are many species of brassica and these brassica species they have evolved uh, because of the hybridization followed by chromosome doubling uh, of many species so for example this is a flow chart and you can see that uh, this is brassica nigra which is a diploid plant it has you can see that 2n is equal to 16 so this is a diploid plant and this is brassica oleracea this brassica oleracea is also a diploid plant it has 20 uh, 2n is equal to 18 chromosomes and you can see here that this is brassica campestris so brassica campestris is also a diploid plant and it has 2n is equal to 20 so it has to uh, diploid plant has 20 chromosomes now in this flow chart you can see that when hybridization took place between brassica nigra and uh, brassica nigra and brassica oleracea the brassica nigra has 16 chromosomes and brassica oleracea has 18 chromosomes so when hybridization took place eight chromosomes came from brassica nigra and then nine chromosomes came from brassica oleracea they gave rise to 17 chromosomes but this was a sterile plant because or uh, because the 17 chromosomes formed univariant by accidental hybridization by accidental doubling chromosome doubling took place and it gave rise to 4x 2n is equal to 4x that is your tetraploid plant of having 34 chromosomes so you can see that this was named as brassica carinata because brassica carinata was evolved as a result of hybridization followed by chromosome doubling so this brassica carinata is a tetraploid species which has evolved from brassica oleracea and brassica nigra now because i have taken this photograph from internet and this has many uh, mistakes you can see that the uh, they are not uh, uh, they have not um, put the species name with small letters so you will not do this mistake in your exam and i have deliberately taken this picture so that i can correct it in front of you and i can also point out the mistakes which are done here and now you, you can see here that this this is represented just uh, they are representing the somatic number but you will write uh, uh, somatic number as well as the uh, basic number to represent as uh, polyploid so you will be writing like this 2n is equal to 4x is equal to 34 so 2n is your somatic number 4x shows the ploidy level and 34 represents the total number of chromosomes so we have discussed this in class that how this is how you will represent the polyploids now in the second cross you you will just understand that how the tetraploid species of wheat have evolved now the second cross took place between brassica nigra and brassica campestris so brassica campestris has 10 20 chromosomes so half the chromosomes will come from this plant uh, that is your 10 and brassica nigra has 16 chromosomes so eight chromosomes will come from this plant now when you see this hybrid which was deployed this will be a sterile plant because it has 18 univalents while when chromosome doubling took place 
and the 18 chromosome doubled to 36 this was a fertile fertile plant and so this was named as brassica juncea the spelling of brassica juncea is also wrong g j u n c e a, a is there so you will now from brassica nigra and brassica campestris you can see that brassica juncea has formed and this is a tetraploid species now the last cross which is between Brassica oleracea and Brassica campestris, Brassica napus was formed. How Brassica napus was formed? Uh, this was again formed by hybridization followed by chromosome doubling. So this has 38 chromosome. So the one species which are in circle, they are all diploid species and the species which are in uh, a rectangle, they are tetraploid species which have evolved from the diploid species so three diploid species have given rise to three tetraploid species in course of evolution of brassica you will refer it from so any other uh, discussing another like example years club uh, and coming and you will understand it very how polyploidy easily. has resulted in the evolution of new species so we are discussing here the evolution of cotton now first of all there are many species of cotton and these are called as these are classified as American and Asian cotton or New World or and Old World cotton. So American cotton or New World cotton, they have small chromosomes and they have 26 in number. So the somatic number uh, is 26 in uh, cotton. And what are the examples of American or New World cotton? Gossypium hirsutum and Gossypium bar barbadens. So these two are tetraploid species and Gossypium remandii and Gossypium thurberi they are diploid species with 26 chromosomes. So the uh, tetraploid species have 52 chromosomes while the um, diploid species have 26 chromosomes. So you have to remember the name of New World cotton or American cotton and similarly Asiatic cotton there are uh, examples uh, with uh, 26 chromosomes and these are diploid species Gossypium arboreum and Gossypium herbaceum. So, Asiatic or Old World cottons they have large chromosomes. So, if you see both a New World cotton and Old World cotton, they have 26 chromosomes in diploid species. But the difference is that a New World cotton has small chromosomes and the Old World cotton has large chromosomes. Now, it is believed that tetraploid cotton have evolved through accidental hybridization between Asiatic diploid species and American diploid species followed by doubling of chromosome. So, in the course of evolution what happened that Gossypium herbaceum which is a Asiatic or old world cotton and Gossypium remondoi which is a upland or new world cotton they accidentally hybridized both have 26 chromosomes and when this hybrid was formed it had 26 chromosomes but they were all present in univalent form and this was sterile. Now chromosome doubling took place accidentally and it resulted in 52 chromosomes. So this 26 univalence or bivalence converted to 26, uh, 26 univalence converted to unit 26 bivalence and the plant was fertile and it was named as Gossypium hirsutum. So from this chart what we have learned that as a result of fertilization between diploid species of Gossypium herbaceum and Gossypium ramandae, uh, Gossypium hirsutum which is a uh, new world cotton has evolved. Now this picture also I have taken from internet and you can see that the there is mistake or uh, Gossypium herbaceum has large chromosomes and not small chromosomes and similarly Gossypium Remondi has small chromosomes and not large chromosomes. So you will refer very good books to understand this topic. You will not refer any, you will uh, refer Griffith's peers uh, so that you do not do, uh, do mistakes while writing the name and number of chromosomes for this particular topic. Now we have learned in this uh, lecture three examples, Brassica, and cotton evolution and we will be now discussing and in the previous lectures we have done examples many more examples of polyploid like criticum species uh, criticum um, species how the evolution took place and raphanobrassica criticale how it was made 
so we have learned that there are many examples of polyploids and they can be made artificially with the help of colchicine treatment or by hybridization followed by chromosome doubling but these polyploids have both limitations and uh, there are benefits so let us discuss that first point is polyploidy in nature is highly significant in terms of origin and evolution of new genera and new species in plant kingdom and the genetic origin of wheat brassica and cotton is an example so we have discussed this that polyploids are very important in crop because they result in the evolution of new species and as a result it adds to genetic diversity polyploidy can be used second point is polyploidy can be used in propagating crops which are valued for vegetative organs because these organs are larger in size than diploids so we have discussed this that, that because of the extra set of chromosomes they have larger fruit size so they are beneficial even when they are sterile and if they are vegetatively propagated they are beneficial we have discussed third point polyploidy adds to genetic diversity because many new crop species have developed but polyploidy is rare in animal kingdom where it results in many developmental changes resulting in death of polyploid animal at an early stage so we have to remember that polyploids are beneficial in plants but in animal kingdom there are rare examples and so it results in death uh, now what are the limitations of polyploids first point is that effects of alloploidy cannot be predicted we have seen uh, this in an example of Refino brassica where Karapanchko wanted uh, heads of cabbage and roots of radish but he uh, got opposite results. So they have some features from both the parents which may be desirable ones like critical was a successful example and undesirable ones like Refino brassica. So effects of polyploidy cannot be predicted. This is one limitation of polyploidy. And newly synthesized alloploids have many defects like low fertility, cytogenetic and genetic instability. So we have discussed that uh, polyploids, most of the polyploids are sterile in nature. So this is the second disadvantage of polyploids. And only a small proportion of alloploids are promising. Uh, but this is a very costly trial and error has to be done before one is likely to come across a promising alloploid it means that this is a very costly affair and it takes a lot of time to develop a hybrid uh, and then chromosome doubling uh, so it is a very expensive and time taking procedure to make polyploids i hope you have understood the topic and we have made five lectures on this particular topic variation in chromosome number and structure uh, so we have you can refer all these videos and refer good books to uh, make your concepts clear thank you students and let us meet in next lecture